we've seen that Gaussians are preserved under affine transformations. That was the affine transformation property. And we've seen that they are preserved under marginalization and also preserved under conditioning. And yet another way in which Gaussians are, yet another operation under which they are preserved is when you take a sum of independent Gaussians. And so we're gonna take a look at this little fact in this video. So if x is normal, multivariate normal, with mean, let's say, mu x and covariance cx, and y is multivariate normal with mean mu y and covariance matrix cy, and if these are independent, and also they need to have the same dimension, so let's put here, let's say that they're both in Rn, then the sum and they, they are independent, that's important, important part of this, then the sum x plus y is also multivariate normal, and it has mean mu x plus mu y, and covariance cx plus cy. Just the nicest possible result you could hope for. Just the, the simplest possible thing. You just add the means and add the covariance matrices. What could be better? beautiful. So let's prove this. It's actually, this, this it turns out is, is not hard to prove. So let's prove it. First, oftentimes when you're trying to prove something for higher dimensions, uh, you can reduce it to a lower dimensional case or even a one dimensional case. And that turns out to be the case here. So first we will consider the case of n equals one. So these are just univariate Gaussians. So it, when n equals 1, we have x and y are just real valued random variables. They're Gaussian distributed. And so these are independent Gaussians, as you know. And that implies, if you remember, the very first example of a multivariate Gaussian distribution that we looked at was we took a bunch of independent Gaussians and just lined them up in a vector and that gave us a multivariate Gaussian. So these, when we put them together, that gives us a multivariate Gaussian, multivariate Gaussian. And by the properties of multivari multivariate Gaussians, just the definition of multivariate Gaussians, any linear combination is also a, it is a univariate Gaussian, in fact. So x plus y is one possible, is one linear combination, and therefore x plus y is Gaussian. And that's the, the one-dimensional case. Well, at least that shows us that it's Gaussian. So for the one-dimensional case, we know it's Gaussian, and that's gonna be the key fact that we're gonna use in higher dimensions. In higher dimensions, it'll be easy to derive what the mean and covariance are. So now let's do the general case to show that it's Gaussian and then we'll show that it has the correct mean and covariance. Switch colors here. It's getting monotonous. Okay, so general case now. The general case we have X and Y in Rn and we need to show it's a Gaussian. Oh, that's the first thing we need to show. So in order to show it's Gaussian, multivariate Gaussian, we need to show that for any vector A in Rn, that the dot product of A with x plus y is univariate Gaussian. That's what we need to show to show that x plus y is multivariate Gaussian. So this, so we let A be some vector, and then we just, let's just multiply this through here. So we get A transpose X plus A transpose Y. And since X is a multivariate Gaussian by assumption, then A transpose X is Gaussian. I'll just write Gaussian. And similarly for A transpose Y, these are both univariate Gaussians. And from the first case we did, the case of N equals one, we know that the sum of independent univariate Gaussians is Gaussian, is a univariate Gaussian. So we just need to make sure these are independent. And since X and Y are independent, 
by our assumptions, these vectors are independent, then the, the any function of those is also independent. And so therefore these are independent univariate uh, Gaussians and so their sum is Gaussian. Gaussian. Univariate Gaussian and that's what we needed to show in order to verify that x plus y is multivariate Gaussian. All right, so we're in very good shape now. Now, so this implies that x plus y is multivariate Gaussian. And we just need to verify that this is the mean and this is the covariance, and that will prove the result. So let's do that. Let's do that next. Well, the mean is pretty obvious, right? Because, because x has mean mu x and y has mean mu y. So the, the mean, the expected value of x plus y is, of course, expected value of x plus expected value of y, which is mu x plus mu y, because the expected value, that's just what the mean means. So that verifies this part. And now we just need to verify that this is, the, in fact, the covariance matrix. So it turns out that for independent random variables, the covariance matrix of their sum equals the sum of the covariance matrices. This is a generalization of the result. There is a result for univariate random variables that says that the variance of a sum of independent random variables is the sum of the variances. And it turns out that the same thing holds for the covariance matrices when they're independent. So that is a fact, it's true, and that proves that the covariance of x plus y is the sum of the covariance of x plus the covariance of y. And that's the proof. That's the, that's the proof of the, the theorem. This is a useful little fact to use. Maybe I'll actually, so that proves it. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I, I could just stop right there but maybe I'll just show you how to prove this because it's actually, it's very easy, but it's, it's a nice little exercise and um, maybe it'll be useful to, maybe you'll learn something about, um, about covariance matrices from that. So let's prove this little fact so that, that if X and Y are independent, that this equals that. Well, it turns out we can use a, a very handy fact, which is that the covariance of a vector x can be written as the expected value of x, x transpose minus the expected value of x times the expected value of x transpose. And here, x, we're thinking of x as a, as a column vector. So this is a column vector times a row vector, and that gives us a matrix. where the ijth entry is xi times xj. And similarly, this is a column vector and this is a row vector. So the ijth entry of this matrix is just the expected value of uh, xi times xj minus the expected value of xi times the expected value of xj, and that's the definition of the covariance. Okay, so we have that for the the covariance of x and similarly for y, we could put, put y in here and get the same thing. And let's write down what that means in the case of, let's write it down for the sum of these. So that this now using this representation is the expected value of x plus y times x plus y transpose minus the expected value of x plus y times the expected value of x plus y transpose. Uh, I'm, you know, dropping the parentheses here because it gets kind of tedious, always inserting the parentheses. And let's multiply these out. So we'll multiply these out and use independence. So this becomes x, x transpose plus expected value of x, y transpose plus x uh, plus y y x transpose plus expected value of y y transpose and then this part we'll put a minus 
and then throw everything in the parens. X, what shall we do? Let's see. We can use linearity first, so this becomes expected value of X plus expected value of Y. And similarly here, so then we'll get EX, EX transpose plus E x e y transpose plus e y e x transpose plus e y e y transpose okay so now what so now ah now we can use independence so it turns out that when x and y are independent then the expected value of x times y transpose equals the expected value of x times the expected value of y transpose and that's just because when you take the expected value of a matrix, then that's the same as taking the expected value of each entry of that matrix. And that's actually the definition. And so since X and Y are independent, then each of their coordinates are independent. So XI is independent of YJ for each I and J. And therefore, in each coordinate, we can use the fact that e x i y j equals e x i e y j. So we just use that fact since by independence, and that gives us this. So therefore, this that that's just this thing that equals this. So this equals this, and this equals this. Right. So these just all cancel since we have the minus. Boom, 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 boom. And we are left with, let's do it in a different color. We're left with this minus this, which is just the covariance of x, right? That's the definition here. Or under this representation, that's one way to, to write it. The covariance matrix of x plus the covariance matrix of y from this part here. And that's just what we wanted to prove. So this is just a just a very simple linear algebra sort of exercise, and just using the, the definition of independence. All right, so hopefully, you know, I just wanted to, if that was sort of mysterious to you that, that this is true, I just wanted to show you exactly how you prove it, and that, that it's actually very, very simple. Once you sort of know the right tricks, you, you sort of know how to write down the covariance, and you maybe get some intuition for, um, you know, especially if you were to do this in the one dimensional case, that's how I thought to do it this way is that I know how to prove it in the one dimensional case. And I thought, well, maybe it just looks exactly the same in the higher dimensional case. And so you write it down this way and, and you just work it out and it, and it works. It's just, just a very simple, nice little proof. Okay. So that proves, well, that, that gives the details all of all the proof of this nice fact about the sum of independent Gaussians just having the sum of the means and the sum of the covariances. And of course, you could extend this to a sum of finitely many Gaussians just by induction. Just repeat this several times and you get the same result. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was that was useful.